What is up, everybody? Covering the cage.com live with you as we are each and every Tuesday here at the studios of the Las Vegas Review Journal. Adam Hill and Heidi Fang here with you, letting you know everything you know, everything you need to know that is going on in the world of MMA. Heidi, how are you today? I'm doing great. Had a little fun morning out at a soccer field, watching some practice go around with the lights. Now we're here to do MMA. Yes, I'm we're very back. excited. Back in the MMA world after a, a brief jaunt into the soccer fields uh, of Las Vegas. So uh, we are here. We are here to talk about UFC on Fox 27, actually. We had a big UFC pay-per-view over the weekend. We had we were in studio to talk about that. But now it is on to different things, and that is uh, down in Charlotte for UFC on Fox 27. And Jordan Rinaldi joins us right now from Charlotte. How you doing, man? Good. We are, uh, I, think, I think we've got you there. I, there you go. Yeah. Are you up, you up now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? There we yeah. go. There we go. We're good. All right. The wonders I'm doing of, great. How are y'all? We are good. The wonders of live TV. So you, you, uh, you, you know, you're a North Carolina guy, right? I mean, this is this is big for you to be fighting on a big stage like this back at home. I know you've had some fights uh, back there that weren't quite on such a big stage, but to be fighting at home, what is that like, man? Fantastic. Uh, first time the UFC has been back in North Carolina, I think, in seven years or so, uh, because of certain rules, I guess. But yeah. Uh, been great and i grew up 20 30 minutes or 20 minutes from where the arena is so it's pretty awesome to get the opportunity as i said you've you know you fought in north carolina before but maybe not on this kind of stage can you talk about where your first fight was because i was reading about this earlier i was pretty interested in that uh first amateur or pro fight first amateur fight first amateur fight was at the the uh I forgot what they're called, but it's basically like a fairgrounds place or, it's or like a flea, market, flea market, right? Yeah, flea market, something like that. Uh, and the conditions were less than great, you know. So it's it's a big difference. I think there's like a dead bird in one of the bathrooms. It's it pretty crazy. So uh, <laughs> going from there to here, it's 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 pretty awesome. And this being your third fight in the UFC, I mean, you had a setback there um, against Abel Trujillo, but then you came back. So now that you've got, a, I think, one of the six or seven Von Blue chokes in UFC history behind you and coming into the third fight, having it at home, what does it mean to you to be able to grow your career here? And what did that setback do for you as a fighter? What did you learn from it when you faced Abel Trujillo? It wasn't... Well, what I learned from the Abel fight was just to control my anxiety and my nervousness and, and to get accustomed to the UFC and the whole process. And I think the more I'm going through it, the more relaxed I can be through it. So uh, the Abel fight, they say a lot of the first time fights in the UFC don't really showcase your talents. And, and I think that was part of the case. I still had a good fight with him, but, uh, you know, the gas tank wasn't there. I think a, a lot of that was nerves and anxiety going into the cage, you know, never being in the UFC cage before. It's it's a huge step up in competition. And then to, to take a fight with Abel Trujillo on two weeks notice or 10 days notice, whatever it was. I mean, that's a big risk. So uh, that was that's what I learned the most from that fight. But I mean, it's it's a process where you, each time you, you get better at it, and I'm, I'm managing it much better, and, and I know how fight weeks work now, and, and I can uh, coordinate my training and my nutrition better each time. And what do you do with the nutrition and, and the training? I know you're back home, so you were here in Vegas for a little bit, but uh, now that you're back home and you're back with your roots where you started at, so... How does that help you in your training to be around, uh, I guess, not a comfort zone, but people that you're familiar with and can work with in training? I mean, it's fantastic. I get to go to my parents' house, which I stay at when I'm in Charlotte. Uh, I live part-time in Atlanta because my wife works there. But when I'm in Charlotte, I live at my dad's house. So I get to go home. He has a salad for me. I'll make some chicken. And, and my diet is perfect. It's, it's simple. I don't have to worry about bringing a a hot plate with me or where am I going to eat this or where am I going to get fresh fruit and, and uh, going on the grocery run. So I have my car out front. I'll, I'll be able to go to the grocery store to wherever I want, whenever I want. So it's really fantastic. And it's, it's really a, a blessing to be able to hop in my car and go home. Or if I want to during this week, I could all sleep in my own bed or, or go wherever I want, whenever I want, go to my home gym that I train at all day, every day. So, so it's really a blessing to be here and have that, just the comfort there. And winning six out of your last seven, that has to kind of give you a confidence booster as well. How do you feel about that and coming off of a win in the UFC as well going into this? Man, I feel great. 
uh, getting that first win in the UFC is it's just like the biggest load off your shoulders. I mean, it, it's like the biggest yoke you have. So uh, it's really great getting that win. Uh, I liked how I got that win. I wish I would have gotten a bonus, you know, but uh, getting that win and, and being able to say not only am I a UFC fighter, but I'm one of the best and I, I can win in the UFC. It, it takes a ton of pressure off on six of seven in my last or six out of seven. Uh, the only loss was on a short notice fight against one of the toughest guys in the division. So it really gives me a lot of confidence. I mean, my game has gotten much better over the years and, and I've had great competition over the years. So it, it's all worked out well. The setbacks were bad, but the confidence that I have now on that uh, six out of seven is, is really big. You talk, you, talk, you talk about this run of, of success, you know, winning six out of seven. Before that, there was a really tough show <laughs> for you of fights. And I've, I've read some things that you, you know, you at least thought about maybe, maybe it was time to stop fighting or think about doing something else. I mean, you have, you know, a great education to fall back on. So uh, what was it that kind of kept you going and how much thought did you give to, to maybe stopping fighting at that time? Well, you know, the, the knockout against Mintasri was tough. The, the loss to Ortega was tough. I, I had a bad stretch in Vegas, and I blame Be uh, Vegas for all of it. I can't fight there for some reason, whatever. <laughs> but, but when I got home, I said, let me try give it one more round. My brother kind of encouraged me and said, hey, you're, you're a really good fighter. You have potential. Stick with it. I said, all right, I'll, I'll give it one more fight uh, and see how I do. And it was that was after my loss to a local guy named Ronnie Rogers is a terrible decision loss. Uh, I thought I killed him in every round. So after that, he was like, you know, stick with it. These are just setbacks. They're just, uh, you know, things that you're going to get better from. So I was like, all right, I'll give it a go. And so started, uh, I forgot who my first fight was after the losing streak, but each fight, I was just like, let's let's try another one. Let's do another one. I'm doing well. Let's do another one. And then the ball started rolling again, and I got that confidence back. And I said, hey, I am one of the best in the world. And the few setbacks are against guys who are very high level, who went on to the UFC. We're taking just one uh, huge main event fight against Hub Swanson, I believe. And honestly, I think I gave him probably the toughest fight in his career so far. So, I mean, these are all things that, that go into it. And I was worried about, or I was contemplating this uh, stopping, but my brother and, and I sat down and my dad and, and we talked about it and, and we gave it one more go. And I'm happy about the, the opportunities that I have now in the UFC. You talk about this opportunity. I mean, it's, a, it's an opponent with a lot of, you know, a, a lot of talk about him, a lot of hype about him. And it's a huge spot on a main card. So what does this opportunity mean for you in your career? It is a huge fight, and, and I think that either they're trying to build up Gregor or, I mean, he has he has all the, the things you want to see. You know, he's got a tremendous wrestling background, and, and he's done really well in the UFC 3-0 so far. Uh, and I think they're trying to build him, but, but they put him against me, and, and that's my job is to go out there and beat him. And what better way in front of my home fans, in front of the nation, if not the world, on the third to last fight on a, a UFC on Fox? I mean, it's it's a blessing to be able to have this opportunity, and and I'm re ready to shock the world. One of, one of the things I've heard fighters talk about when they talk at home, or when they fight at home, some guys love it, some guys hate it. I mean, you talked about the positives. Mm -hmm. Are there negatives as well? I mean, is your phone ringing like every five minutes? Somebody wants a ticket, or somebody wants something? Absolutely. There's <laughs> there's certainly frustrations and and random people out of the woodwork saying, "Hey, man, you got some tickets?" Hey, no, those tickets go to my family. I haven't talked to you in five years. Don't leave me alone. <laughs> And, and there are some things like that, and, and it's annoying at times, but it's part of the process. Uh, when you're successful, people want to be around success. Uh, the, there's a little more pressure because you're in front of your home crowd. I've only fought as a pro in Charlotte, I think, twice. Uh, most of the time, I was going to other people's hometown and everything. But uh, just having the hundreds or thousands of people who will be there rooting for me, you know, I'm, I'm pumped about it. puts a little more pressure on it, but... When I'm tired in that third round, 30 seconds left, and I'm fighting as hard as I can, and uh, I hear them roaring for me, it's going to give me more energy, and, I, and I'm excited about that opportunity, as well as the, the pressure's kind of let go because I am an underdog in this fight, and, and I understand that. I'm not an idiot, so uh, I know that I'm an underdog, and people aren't expecting me to win, so that, 
there's no pressure on me now. It, it takes it away. If I go out there and shock the world, fantastic. And that's what I plan on doing. If I go out there and lose, people will just say, oh, it was supposed to happen. Right. It's right. not going to happen. I'm going to go out there and, and uh, show people otherwise. Well, you, you, have one, you should have one extra ticket, right? Because your wife can't watch you fight, I've heard. She can't. She, she hates it, but I've convinced her. Her brother's going to go with her, and she'll be with my brother and step, stepdad as well. So uh, she'll probably be at the concession stand getting something while I, I'm fighting, and then she'll know what happened from the roars or not. <laughs> there you go. Well, I do know a little bit about you um, outside of MMA, outside of fighting, that you are a gigantic Carolina Panthers fan. But uh, unfortunately, they didn't make it this year, even you know, to the Super Bowl. But I was curious who you are looking at as winning the Super Bowl now that we know it's down to two teams, the Eagles and the Patriots. Well, it's interesting because the Philly was obviously the, the go-to. And Panthers had a great game against them earlier in the season. It was actually relatively close. Uh, but... Now that Foles is in there, he's doing great. People forget that he had that fantastic year. I think it was 14 or something like that. I forgot when, when it was. But he's a great quarterback when he plays well. And the AFC was so weak this year. It was kind of a joke relative to the NFC. I mean, the NFC was so strong. So I, I'm cheering for uh, Philadelphia, which is hard for me to say. <laughs> but anytime, anytime I can root against uh, Tom Brady and the uh, uh, cheaters exactly. <laughs> i'll do it every time exactly i mean they have they have everyone in their pockets come on well so as you mentioned you're you know you're an underdog you're, you're kind of rooting for the underdog there you got to root for the underdog in the super bowl as well absolutely consistent hey I'm, I'm, <laughs> sure you, I'm sure you get this in any interview that you do especially non-mma interviews but even though we're more of an mma show i, I do want to point it out that you don't look like a fighter like you hear that all the time right of course, actually, when I was checking into the hotel, uh, the lady, I was like, I don't know where to go because I'm in town and our, uh, we didn't coordinate as well as we could have, I guess, on when I check in and where. So when I got to the hotel, I was like, hey, I'm checking in for the UFC. What do I do? And, and uh, the lady and the guy standing there, he looked at me and he was like, you're a fighter? I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, and then she said, you don't look like one. Like, you know, I, I get it all the time. I don't, you don't have to look me to be able to go and hit somebody, to go and choke somebody. You don't have to look me. I wish I had the intimidation factor, but I don't. Yeah, you're okay with that. I mean, like, it, I think it's probably a good thing to not look like a fighter. And I don't even know what that means, look like a fighter. You just don't. It's the intimidation factor. So the people you're walking in, uh, along the street with and you're like, that guy, there's something about him. I don't want to talk to him. I, I want to leave him alone. I don't have that fact. People will come up to me and shake my hand and say, how you doing? <laughs> there you go. Well, hey, you, you also, you know, not that there is actually a lot of fighters that have uh, college degrees, and that's actually one of the unique things about the sport I think people are surprised about. But, you know, you actually have a, a pretty good education. You studied some real things in college. Yeah, I didn't get, you know, the sociology or psychology degrees. I got an accounting and finance degrees. They're dual degrees. But I love the fact that most of the, the athletes in the UFC, wrestlers in college, or athletes in college, and have degrees. It's fantastic to say that, and, and that are well educated, or at least decently educated. But right. yeah, I have that fallback plan anytime I want. I'm going to banking. That's what Charlotte's known for. Could you really do that after like a fun career as a professional fighter? Could you really go sit behind a desk and do accounting all day? I actually love crunching numbers. I think I'd have to get out every day and go for a lunch break to a gym or like a noon session. But I don't know. I, I like crunching numbers. It's easy, but. I'm, my focus right now is a thousand percent on being the best fighter in the world, and and then I won't have to worry about going to a job. That is very true. Well, is there any way you can use you know math and crunching numbers as a fighter? Absolutely. You look at your opponents, their their opponents' uh, winning percentages. You look at how good they are at, at takedown percentages, submissions, all their attributes, punches landed per minute, and and of course I crunch those and think about those often. Uh, as well as just on the personal level, I got to be smart with the uh, little bit of money that I make. So I'm, I'm both in the cage and out of the cage. I, I got to use my finance and accounting degrees to say, "Hey, I can't go and buy a Ferrari after winning one fight in the UFC. I got to, got to buy a little Honda." <laughs> there you go. Hey, you, uh, interesting you brought, you brought that up because it's actually something I've I've had a lot of debates about because I am a nerd in many ways. But uh, 
the, the, the use of analytics in MMA, it has taken over in other sports so much. Like we see it every single sport, you know, every, every tendency of every player on every, uh, every down, every play. Uh, in MMA, it's a little different because I have talked to fighters that have tried to use it and maybe they think too much and it, it throws them off because it's more, you know, it should be more uh, reactionary than, you know, than thinking, I guess. Have you found that? Have you kind of thought like, hey, maybe I think about these things too much or I put too much emphasis on the math? You don't have to put it or you shouldn't put too much into it. And that's the thing, you have to be fluid in there. Being in the cage is, is different than any other sport where you can game plan and it's going to go perfectly to that game plan and, and you can uh, counter it with another game plan. We have to be fluid in there. We have to be able to approach those numbers while we're in there. It's not just uh, the stuff going into the fight. You have to be able to analyze data as it's coming in real time. And I think that's what, it, what sets me apart from a lot of fighters is that I can see, oh, he's doing this a lot. He's doing that a lot. Now let me do this and it and it'll make it different, you know? And so just being able to be an intellectual fighter, I think, is a is a huge advantage for me. But going in there, you, you gotta make sure it's fluid still. Yeah, for sure. Hey, uh, we're looking forward to the fight cards for sure on Saturday. Uh, UFC on Fox, a big opportunity for you for sure. Uh, help us real quick before you get out of here. Break down the main event. What's gonna happen there? Oh man. It hurt my feelings here because I love Derek. He's a North Carolina guy as well. I really hope he goes in there and, and gets that knockout. I mean, and and he can knock out anybody, let's be honest. Um, Jacare is is just so fantastic on the ground. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the I think it's the underdog right now, I, I think is Brunson. So I'm going with the underdog too. He's gonna get a quick KO in the first or second round consistency there you go big under exactly. underdog card on uh, on saturday and then the underdog in the super bowl that's a uh, jordan Ronaldo's pick uh great great stuff man we really appreciate the time thank you so much and uh, good luck on saturday we'll be tuned in for sure to watch ufc on fox 27 thank you all very much y'all take care thanks man great stuff jordan Ronaldo, former las vegas as you said now back on the east coast uh so look forward to watching him on saturday we appreciate some time from him as he said Big main event, Jacare, Derek Brunson, middleweight bout Saturday night. That's going to be a good one. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, especially because if you think way back to when they first met in Strike Force, and Brunson is actually knocked out by Jacare, and that's when the first I thought, wow, Jacare could really score with his hands. Like, <laughs> yeah. I never thought of him that way until that fight. And now we know that he's very multifaceted there in the cage. And when you put him up against somebody like Brunson, who's had these uh, wonderful knockouts, like Jordan was saying. I mean, it's really going to be an interesting matchup to see how time has changed Derek Brunson's game from what happened in their first fight. Yeah, so look forward to that fight on Saturday. As you said, look to see some of uh, Jacare and Derek Brunson's handiwork there. Brunson has gotten so good at the early knockouts. Jacare pretty much dominates everyone on the ground. But as you said, he's got the dangerous hands too. So Brunson can't relax just because the fight is standing. That should be a good one coming up. On Saturday, we mentioned uh, Jordan Rinaldi, Gregor Gillespie are fighting, and also on the card, uh, Bermudez and Feely, which is a, a fascinating bout. It is. Um, you know, Feely's been kind of up and down in his UFC career this far. Um, you know, he's had great finishes and he's had some really hard losses. So I feel like this is his time to really prove that he can come up into some top level competition. Dennis Bermudez has uh, always been. Kind of one of those guys that you know, really has a strong wrestling base and is known for that in the UFC. So top contender as always. Um, he again, you know, suffered a loss way back um, towards the Super Bowl last year. So here he is again, another <laughs> close to the Super Bowl card. Yeah. We'll see how he can manage uh, to weather the storm here and come back. Andre Feely, one of the more talented guys in the division, as you said, a little inconsistent at times. Uh, Dennis Bermuda is a really, really tough guy uh, who's very durable and uh, is dangerous at any time, even if he's down in a fight. So that will be a good one to watch as well. Some not huge names on the card, but some fascinating matchups for sure. UFC on Fox 27 will have everything you need to know for the card to get you ready, including analysis of each of the main card fights and picks coming up on Saturday. Certainly, Heidi was better than me on Saturday. Not <laughs> great. Yeah, uh, neither better. of us had a great night Saturday with the picks. <laughs> we'll try to get back on track with UFC on Fox 27. And, and real quick in the news department, uh, we talked a little bit about it, but we are set for two huge title fights in Brooklyn in April now. Uh, Nurmagomedov and Ferguson, we think, 
We think fourth time it's been scheduled, they haven't fought yet. Uh, we think they're going to fight for a title, the lightweight title, the interim title. Dana we said don't know. undisputed. Undisputed but title, but Connor still has the title. I don't know. I'd love to provide clarity. I can't. If you read the story this morning, really up in the air what title they're fighting for, but it doesn't matter. As long as they fight each other, I think MMA fans will be very happy. UFC 223 in Brooklyn and the rematch. We expected it. Rose Namajunas. The champion against Yuan Yuan Jacek, that's a good fight as well. Definitely. I was so impressed with the way Rose uh, was able to finish Joanna in their first fight. I'm really wondering if she can pull that same lightning in a bottle off again because Joanna's just going to come back even more fired up than she was in the previous fight and definitely not underestimating Rose if she had at all in the first time. So this is going to be a really great fight. Yeah, hopefully that fight card stays together. That will be a big one in Brooklyn in April. Before that, as we said, UFC on Fox 27. The next pay-per-view will come up in Perth, Australia, UFC 221, and then UFC 222 here in Vegas. Uh, keep you up to date on all those announcements and everything else going on in the world of MMA at Covering the Cage. Follow us on all the social media, Covering the Cage on Twitter. Also follow at Heidi Fang, at Adam Hill LBRJ as well. Thank you to Jordan Rinaldi and UFC for bringing him on today. We appreciate that. That was great stuff. And uh, we'll watch the fights on Saturday and uh, stay tuned to Covering the Cage. We'll let you know how it all turns out. Talk to you soon.